Grace and peace to you from God our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. It's a great day in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. If you're a guest with us today, we don't do visitors. Guests are those with whom and of whom you celebrate God is brought in your midst. So you need to know you were part of this body of Jesus Christ the minute you walked in. And we celebrate that with you. We do the Pauline greeting. And the Pauline greeting is this. Peace be with you. And the response is... Let's stand and greet each other in Christ's name. Good morning, church family. Would you stand with me as we read the call to worship together? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me and devour my flesh, my adversaries and my foes, they shall stumble and fall. I believe that we shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage and wait for the Lord. Remember the joys and concerns of our church family, I invite you to check the back of your bulletin where it says prayer requests. The flowers on the altar are from the service yesterday for Robbie Reed. Please keep Sarah and the children, the rest of the family in your prayers through these difficult days. We praise God for wonderful and successful surgeries. It's good to see Joyce back today. Um, and also Paul Nicholson, Gail Tubbs, Darlene Chapman, and Mark Marsden are all listed on your bulletin, and they've all had uh, good surgeries. So we thank God for that. Will you go to God in prayer with me, please? Lord, there are so many joys and concerns that we bring to you every week, and we're amazed that you have such love and compassion for us, that you listen, that you care, that you invite us to come to you. What an awesome God we serve. We come to worship and praise you, to find warmth in the fellowship of other believers. We come to glorify you, Lord, and to be renewed in our faith, to be encouraged, to share your love with everyone we meet. Lord, you call us to be your disciples, and we say that we are. So continue to encourage us and help us to be open to the opportunities that you plant in front of us every day to love and serve you, to share your love, to share the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, with everyone we meet. Lord, we pray for those that we've named, for all those in our bulletin, all those in our church family who are struggling, and all those who go unnamed, prayers that are deep in our hearts, or prayers that we think are too small to offer up to you. 
You know the number of hairs on our head and you care about every aspect of our life. So help us to be brave, to trust you, to know that you love us more than we can imagine. We thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be more like him. Forgive us where we fail you and fail others and thank you for the forgiveness that you offer us through Jesus Christ, your son. We pray all these things in his precious name as we share the prayer he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. You'll find that in, on your, uh, in your pew Bible on page 656 if you'd like to follow along, and I encourage you to. It's, you'll notice it's quite a bit easier than, Jim, what you had to do last week. So. And I'm grateful, very grateful. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, O oh, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand, and he touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Mayo. I want to publicly thank uh, Chad McCree for pinch hitting on Bible study. Um, my family actually got to go to the rodeo and the irony is they weren't going to get to go. And so I can't thank you enough for that. That was a huge gift. And we got to sit together. We rarely are in the same realm of influence. So mama called and said, finishing up Bible study, but I got to make my final point. And I thought that's 20 more minutes right there. But I can't thank you enough, and I want to publicly thank you so much. I want to talk to you today about stewardship, and I want to tell you that we're going to do a stewardship campaign, and we're going to push harder than we ever have before in this church for three weeks. It's going to be like a Marine Corps assault on a beach, except we cuss less than the Army does. That's not true. We're going to do a lot more this year, church. We're going to do more outreach. We're going to do more mission. We're going to talk about stewardship. We're going to follow this up with a Dave Ramsey course that will be offered. And if you need to take it again, which we all do, take it again. Be reminded of good stewardship. Low debt. Some of us have too many toys. I want to talk to you about stewardship, and I want to talk to you about the stewardship of your soul and your discipleship today. And in all of that, God gives us hope. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in spite of the nature of the presenter, we pray that in the words spoken, they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we ask these things in Jesus' name and all of God's church said. Now, I brought up the stewardship campaign. Mid-February, it's going to start. We're going to go hard, heavy. We're going to celebrate. You're going to see everybody in leadership bring their stewardship card up front in worship and put it in an offering plate. I want you to push hard, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push harder financially this year out of the Robbins household. We tithe to two different churches. I'm not going to lie. 
kind of took advantage of my wife's church when I first got here and I took some extra money. Is that stealing? If you take it from one church and give it to yours, maybe. We divided it up. We got to big time because we were living in a camper. So we pretended that we were wealthy for a few months till we made the house payment. Folks, don't think I don't know you have many commitments. You have kids in sports. You have commitments that are financial. But we're going to examine what we can do this year. And we're going to push hard. We're going to push beyond budget. We've got some things in the works to retire some debt. Add to programming. Add to evangelism. Add to facilities. Add to budget. Have a real parking lot that is paved or concreted where it won't go away in five years. We're going to do it the right way. But I'm going to ask that you push with me. And I'm going to ask that you step up when we are asked to step up in ways that you may not be familiar or comfortable with, serving those that you may not be familiar or comfortable with in new ministries and outreach from this congregation. And it begins with stewardship. Money. I'm going to say it. Money. I had a lady tell me one time, we were talking about the electric bill at a church, and she said, I didn't realize we paid utilities. Now, this was a small church, but for this church, a $300 electric bill was a big deal. And we had been open for VBS. And of course, when you open over and over again, you know, kids don't think about the money. They're okay to air condition the whole world. You ever notice that when you're raising your kids? They'll leave a door open. Why not? Maybe it'll cool off June. Mid-February, get ready because we're going to do this. We're going to do it in ways we've never dreamed. But sometimes different can be good. Sometimes it wakes us up a little bit, including me. Jeremiah was trying to wake up an entire culture. He was over Judah. They'd been invaded three different times by the Babylonians, and he never gave up hope. And yet continually, he was told by God, if you'll speak these truths. But at no point in the Scripture did you hear that they were going to be easy on him. Have you ever noticed that? Sometimes when you tell the cold, hard truth, what happens is the cold, hard repercussions bounces right back. Remember, I'm rubber, you're glue, and it sticks to you. And Jeremiah was beaten. He was threatened. At one point, he was thrown into a cistern. It's the late 500s BC, of course. And Judah has been invaded time and time and time again, in particularly Jerusalem. They've torn down the walls in order to humiliate the Jews. In other words, not just desecrating the temple, but saying, by the way, we can even tear down the very walls that you built to protect yourselves. And Jeremiah says, rebuild them. And they say, well, you don't know our past. We've been through this and that. And he says, I don't care. Rebuild them. Stop crying about it and get a rock and put it in place and then pick up another rock. Well, Jeremiah, I'm tired. Suck it up. And the people don't like it because they've even begun to deny their very existence of their origins. The diaspora had sent them out. If you're familiar with the diaspora, what they did was they took a Jewish community, instead of warring with it, they would overpower it. And then they would say, you know what, Johnson family and Smith family and Davis family, we're going to send you out to Babylon. And by the way, we're going to give you a a 500-acre farm. And we're going to give you a free home. I know you've lived in these ruins here in Jerusalem, but we're going to do that for you because we care about you. And by the way, you're welcome to leave at any time, but you give us back your home and your land and your proceeds. And shockingly enough, the Jewish community became more and more deluded in many ways, and they were diverted from the nature even at one point to the very existence in terms of their relationship with God and the validity of the history. And folks, if you don't identify history in this world today and you try and erase it, you are doomed to repeat it. Amen? And they're doing that. They deny it. They're even denying at some point, some of them, the very origin, the exodus from Israel is an example that they would deny Something that had to do with the origins of who they are, how they were founded, and how they belong to Almighty God. 
And it reminds me of a story. A little boy looked at his mom and he said, Mom, how did we get here? And she said, well, you know what happens in creation is two people love one. And he said, no, 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 that, that's not what I'm asking. How did we get here? People. And she said, oh, oh, okay. Well, in Genesis, it tells a story of Adam and Eve, and they were the beginning people that God created, and this is how it worked. And she gets done with this story, and when she's done, he looks at her and he says, well, Dad, I asked him first. You know what he said? She said, what? He said, we came from monkeys. She sat for a minute, she looked at the counter, and she said, yes, I would agree with him on his side of the family. <laughs> we have to be careful that we don't forget who we are and whose we are in the midst of societal norms that want to pull us away from worship, raising our kid in the church. Did you hear him today? It didn't take two seconds when Teresa said, do you know what this means? Every one of the kids yelled, Jesus! Do you hear yourselves in the work that you've put forth, teaching VBS, thinking when you get kicked on the playground that it doesn't make any difference? I'm still trying to reconcile that one with God. Whatever in the world says, kick the preacher, he's on the playground in 101 degree heat, I've got to figure out. When I see the face of God, I'm going to go, Why? And then every year, in front of the VBS director, I say these things, which are idiocy. I'll go anywhere. Here's the witness. Janice, I will do anything you want me to do at VBS. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all God's church said together, Amen. guarantee I'll be on that playground. I guarantee you. But you know what happens? They walk away, and when Teresa does lessons, and she says, well, what does this mean? They can say Jesus. They're remembering and learning who they are and whose they are in Jesus Christ, their Savior. We're of a pre-resurrection and pre-crucifixion and pre-Savior-oriented narrative here today when we're talking about Jeremiah, yet God's providence prevails. He says, I'll put my words on your lips. Don't worry about what you're going to say. One of the things we're doing during confirmation is we're taking turns praying People are so worried. Have you ever noticed that in public speaking? Everybody thinks they have to be good. Just direct them to your preacher. It'll take the pressure off. You don't have to be good. You just have to be there and make the effort. That's it. And God decides for Jeremiah when he's knit together in his mother's womb. Provenient grace. Remember, Wesley stole it from Paul, but... Provenient grace, I knit you together in your mother's womb. I wanted you to be here and therefore you are. And he says, don't worry about you, what you can or can't say. I will put my words upon your lips. And God does. Jeremiah finds himself in a cistern wondering if they're going to fill it up and drown him at one point. He's in prison, he's beaten, he's ridiculed, he's mocked. He's never allowed to get married or have children. All of these sacrifices that he makes before God have nothing to do with him standing in God's truth. It's the happenstance of what we call the Christological experience of this earth. Just because you do good doesn't mean you're not going to suffer peril. Amen? I want to get a loud amen because this stands in the truth and the antithesis of the prosperity gospel and that's done enough damage to Christendom today. Standing in God's truth can cost you. Will you say amen? amen? We're talking to our confirmands right now about the first question we ask in baptism. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and hold to Christ as your Savior who defeats sin and death? And I'm sorry, but there's nothing in this Bible that is postmodernism that says there's nothing wicked. It speaks of evil and wickedness, and you and I are called to defeat it and fight it. Amen? Sounds a little disturbing, doesn't it? But welcome to the reality of the world. I want you to know, the reason the rodeo is so important to me is because I get to advertise in front of thousands of people a Lido Methodist church. They want to write you up like Rambo. And here's the deal. I can tell you what my job was in the military. All of us can tell you what our job is. And it sounds real fancy, but here's what it equals to. Boring training, seminars, even diversity training. 
thousands and thousands of hours of boredom when nothing's going to happen and you know it won't. That's the definition of anti-terrorism training in Department of Defense. Thousands and thousands of hours. But it sounds real hip if you put it in a, I was a special whatever to whatever. And, and so I got to the roadie and I said, scribble all that out. He said, what do you want? I said, just, just if you'll say chaplain to first responders and then I want that Alito Methodist Church in there. And he goes, ah, advertising. I said, heck yeah, I am. And we yell in Jesus' name because I want people to remember who they belong to. I even had an imam stop me and said, I said amen after your prayer because you said, I pray these things in the name of the risen Christ Jesus. He said, I agreed with everything you prayed with, so I can amen that. That's legal for me. I said, well, good. But folks, if you don't think I'm going to pray in Jesus' name in public to make people happy, there's the Constitution and then there's this. Guess which one wins over? The Holy Scripture. The world needs to know Jesus Christ. Well, preacher, you're not being very politically correct. Not good at that. The world needs to know Jesus Christ, their Savior. The world. It says it in Matthew 28 before Jesus ascended. You remember that? Our identity is the church of Jesus Christ. As Jeremiah was trying to tell people, was to bring people to God. And he said, you've forgotten it. In fact, you've become so paganistic that you've forgotten not only who you are, but your purpose. Return to your purpose and God will be with you. And it's just like going to see someone. I had a conversation with a young man in jail a few years ago at Ellis County, and this is what he said to me. How can you let law enforcement in our church with as corrupt as they all are? And I said, well, what are you talking about? Now, now you talk on closed circuit TV. You don't get to talk in the glass because I have no reason why. But So you're on a screen talking to someone else on a screen and I said, well, let's, let's revisit where you've been. Let's just cut the bull. I've been gentle with you, but you're not listening. You took a narcotic. Do you admit it? Yeah, I admit it. You drove and ran over someone's pet. Do you admit it? Yeah, I admit it. You stopped for a minute. They got your license number. They reported you, and you passed out at a ditch in North Ellis County. Do you admit it? Yeah, I admit it. But when I was in the ditch, I wasn't driving or hurting anybody, and they arrested me. Welcome to Judah. We didn't do anything wrong. We just ignored God and we had pagan gods before us and then it got chaotic. God, how could you do this to us? Do you exist? And Jeremiah says, I'm not going to have it. We're going to stand in the truth of Almighty God. He has placed his word upon my lips and I shall speak it. We live in a world in a time where there's not much hope spoken. Will you say amen? But I want you to turn right now to the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, verse 11, and I want you to hear these words of hope that no one can refute. No one. You're talking about a man that's been beaten, persecuted, prosecuted, and everything else for speaking God's truth. And this, at the 29th chapter of the writing, is what is said. For surely, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. I'm going to read it again, because you are the same people God is speaking to. Hear me, church. For surely, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. You ever felt like Jeremiah in the pit where you think, how did I get here? What has happened in my life? What did I do to deserve this experience? And the words of Jeremiah Someone who was denied and someone who was persecuted and someone who regardless spoke the word of God remembering whose he was and who he was. Ring true today. I want you to read this verse. 
doesn't take long, every day this week. And I'm going to ask that you take a different portion of your life where you feel persecuted, prosecuted, mistreated, or betrayed. And I want you to lift it to God. And remember, the God that we worship, that is the God, not one of the gods, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the way to heaven, wants you to know that there's hope for you in the future regardless of these circumstances. And he wants you to remember who you are and whose you are through Jesus Christ, your Savior. I'm going to ask that you covenant to do that with me this very week. You want to discount yourself? You better be careful. He knows the plans he has made for you. I'm going to ask that you covenant to read that every day in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All of God's church said together, amen. We give the invitation every time we gather. It is not from Alito Methodist. It is from Jesus Christ, our Savior. If you'd like to be baptized or you'd like to accept Christ as your Savior or you'd like to join with this congregation, you won't find a better group of people who are sinners just trying to get it right. And by the way, Maria, we have that on a magnet out there. I'll send one with you. We admit it every Sunday. Amen, church? Let's stand and praise God. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, that thou art. No more by day. your week is filled with hope I hope you remember God has a purpose for you God intended for you to be here and God has a mission for you independently privately and corporately as the church of Jesus Christ let's make disciples and remember God has placed his word on your lips and now receive the benediction Lord when we doubt lift us up when we're empty we ask that you fill us when we doubt, give us confidence. Remind us of who and whose we are in Christ our Savior. May we go into this world and make disciples. May we remember that hope is around every corner and an eternity for each and every one of us through Christ our Savior. Remind us that regardless of any trial or tribulation, hope comes from you. And we ask these things in the name of the risen Christ Jesus and all of God's church said together. Have a blessed week, church.